Hello, welcome back to the lecture series on multivariate calculus integration. So far, we had been discussing double and triple integrals. Today's lecture session, we will start vector integration. The contents of vector integration will be line integrals, surface integrals, and some very important theorems given by Green, Gauss, and Stokes. Today, we will start with line integrals. So, what is a line integral? A line integral is an integral where the function to be integrated is evaluated along a curve. The terms path integral, curve integral or curvilinear integral are also used to talk about line integral. Now, note that this line integral is the generalization of the definite integral a to b fx dx of scalar calculus. We know that this a to b fx dx means that we integrate the function fx with respect to x from a to b. That essentially means that we integrate along the x-axis, which is of course a straight line. And line integral will be a generalization of this so that now we may integrate along any curved line or a curve. The function to be integrated may be a scalar field or a vector field. If the integrand is a scalar field, we call it line integrals of scalar fields, whereas if the integrand is a vector field, we would call it line integrals of vector fields. As per our syllabus, we will discuss only line integrals of vector fields. Now, first let us see some basic definitions. A curve C is called closed if its initial and final points coincide. A very common example is a circle. However, it will be open if, of course, the initial and the final points differ or do not coincide. For example, a parabola. A curve C is said to be simple if it does not cross itself. Again, a circle is a simple curve while a figure 8 type curve is not simple as it crosses itself now. A curve C is said to be smooth if a unique tangent to the curve exists at every point and varies continuously as we traverse the curve. A curve C will be called piecewise smooth if it consists of finitely many smooth parts. A region D is open if it does not contain any of its boundary points. A region D is said to be connected if we can join any two points in the region with a curve that lies completely in the region D. And lastly, a region D is said to be simply connected if it is connected and contains no holes. That means if a closed curve lying in the region can be contracted to a point without passing out of the region. Now, these definitions will be useful at some points when we will discuss this vector integration and the theorems. In fact, in all our discussion, we will consider the curve to be a smooth curve. So, let us now proceed to define line integrals of vector fields. Let f, x, y, z be a continuous vector point function defined throughout some region of space and let c be any smooth curve in that region. So here we have plotted the curve c. And we consider the portion of the curve between the points a and b. We now divide the curve c into n parts by the points a equal to p0, p1, p2, pi minus 1, pi, and p is pn. So here we have the points pi minus 1 and pi. And let their position vectors be r0, r1, ri minus 1, ri, rn. And also suppose that ri minus ri minus 1 is equal to delta ri. That means in this figure, basically, this is our delta ri. Now, 
let xi be any point on the arc pi minus 1 pi so that if xi is the value of the vector field at the point xi. We now consider the sum of the scalar products summation f of xi dot delta ri as i varies from 1 to n. If this sum now tends to a definite limit as n tends to infinity, then this limit is defined as the line integral or curve integral of f along the curve c from a to b and the integral is denoted as f dot dr along the curve c from the point a to the point b or simply f dot dr along the curve c. And if c is a closed curve, then the line integral of f along the curve c is denoted like this. Here, this is the notation for closed curve. Further, in rectangular Cartesian coordinates, the line integral may be written like this, where the function f is having the components p, q and r in the x, y, z directions. Then this line integral f dot dr along the curve c will be given by p dx plus q dy plus r dz along the curve c. And this form in Cartesian coordinates is very often used in problems. Further, if the curve c is given by rt equal to xti plus ytj plus ztk, where t varies from a to b, the line integral is actually evaluated like this. So, the line integral f dot dr along the curve c is evaluated as f of rt dr dt dt. So, we integrate now with respect to t from a to b. And in Cartesian coordinates, the same expression will be written like this, that the integral p dx plus q dy r dz over c will be now given by this integral p dx dt plus q dy dt plus r dz dt dt. And this is integrated now from a to b. So, Another type of line integral over a vector field is possible, that is, f cross dr along the curve c. However, in our discussion, we will only see the line integral of the type f dot dr. Let us now see some examples. So, our first example here is evaluate the integral i equal to x square y dx plus x minus 2 y dy over the part of the parabola y equal to x square from the point 0, 0, 2, 1, 1. So let us see the curve. It is the part of the parabola y equal to x square from the point 0, 0, 2, 1, 1. Now to evaluate this integral along this curve c, let us first parameterize the curve. So if we take x equal to t, of course then y becomes t square. And we can see easily that t varies from 0 to 1. So we have dx equal to dt and dy equal to 2t dt. So if we now use these expressions, the integral becomes now 0 to 1. x square, so this is now t square. y is again replaced by t square. dx is dt. x minus 2y, so this is t minus 2t square and dy is replaced by 2t dt. So if we simplify this, we get t4 plus 2t square minus 4t cube dt and the limit goes from 0 to 1. So if we evaluate this integral, we will get the answer as minus 2 by 15. Now, let us evaluate the same integral along a different path. So our next question is, Evaluate the same integral as before, but now C is the straight line from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So remember that earlier we had evaluated this integral where C was a parabola joining 0, 0 and 1, 1. And now we will evaluate along the straight line path. Now, of course, we can see that the equation of this straight line is nothing but y equal to x. 
So if we use parametric coordinates, we can take x equal to t, y equal to t, and t again varies from 0 to 1. Also, we can easily see dx equal to dt, dy equal to dt. So if we use these expressions now in the integral, we will get here integral t square multiplied with t dt plus t minus 2 t dt and t varies from 0 to 1. So as we simplify, we get t cube minus t dt and once we evaluate this integral, the answer is going to be minus 1 by 4. Now note one thing, this answer differs from the answer where we had a parabolic path. So what we observe then that the line integral depends on the path of integration. Not only the endpoints are important, the path of integration is also very, very important. So we can now make a comment that in general, the line integral depends on the path of integration. So an obvious question now comes, is it possible that the line integral is independent of the path of integration? Now this point will be investigated in the next lecture session. Meanwhile, let us see one more example on line integrals. So find the line integral x dx plus y dy plus x plus y minus 1 dz along the curve C where C is the line segment AB traversed in the direction from the point A111 to the point B234. So we are here in the xyz coordinate system and this is the point A111 and the point B234. So our curve is nothing but this straight line. So first we need to write down the equation of the straight line. And we easily see as this line AB passes through the points 111 and 234, the equation of the line can be written like this. X minus 1 by 2 minus 1, Y minus 1 by 3 minus 1, Z minus 1 divided by 4 minus 1 which gives us x minus 1 by 1 equal to y minus 1 by 2 equal to z minus 1 by 3. And as we want to parameterize this equation, let us take this equal to t. So the equation in parametric form becomes x equal to t plus 1, y equal to 2t plus 1 and z equal to 3t plus 1. Now see that as we take the initial point 111, the value of t is going to be 0. Again, as we go to the terminal point B, which is given by 2, 3, 4, if we solve it, we can easily get the value of t as 1. So let us now use these expressions in this integral and evaluate it. Also observe that dx will be equal to dt dy will be equal to 2 dt and dz will be equal to 3 dt. So let us now try to evaluate the integral. So this is our given integral. So as we put the expressions for x as t plus 1, y as 2t plus 1 and now finally it becomes this expression which as we simplify we will get it nothing but only 4t plus 6 dt and we have already told the limits of t are from 0 to 1. So as we integrate finally the answer is going to be 13. So with this we will close today's session. In the next lecture session we will investigate when line integrals can be path independent and also we will see some physical applications of line integrals of vector fields. So Thank you and goodbye till then.